Let's look at some of the guitar parts, I suppose the main guitar parts in Kashmir. I think I tried, I tried to tab the whole thing, so it's available below uh, if, if you're interested. Um, but on this one, we're just gonna talk about, I suppose some of the, the main points to, to consider. Um, it is in Dadgad tuning, which is exactly as it sounds, D-A-D-G-A-D. Uh, if you want to know sort of how to get into that, I'll leave a, uh, a chapter marker. You can skip ahead to that. Um, otherwise, we'll uh, we'll jump straight in. Guitar tone wise, I went a humbucker style guitar. Not a lot of distortion, sort of a plexi kind of thing, a Marshall kind of thing. But again, not not super distorted. Um, okay, so the first riff, that intro riff. I played differently to Jimmy. Am I disagreeing with Jimmy Page? Well, no, of course not. But everybody's hands are different. Every, everybody feels you know, more comfortable playing things a certain way or the other. So uh, what he does, he play, he basically has a, a D5 and he ascends um, the, the fifth. So he'll have his pinky there on the D and his first finger on the A, okay? And he ascends. <laughs> Okay, so the difference is I play the A5, the G5 like this way. Okay, so it's this note versus. Okay, so you can hear it there, there's exactly the same note, same octave. It's the timbre, it's the quality of the note, which is just slightly different. The unwound string, the way he plays it, is just slightly brighter. But in the context of a mix, you're not going to notice at all. So if you want to play the way uh, Jimmy plays it, the very first chord, he's hitting first finger, second fret on the G string. For me, it's so much easier to play it uh, a regular D5. I do it first and fourth finger. Okay, so let's look at that part. Okay, so the interesting thing is the drums are really outlining like a 4-4 four, four, and the guitar's kind of playing a 3-4 sort of sort of groove. So it's interesting the way it uh, fits together. So the first one, just a down, up, down. Okay, that's the main uh, strumming pattern on that D5, okay? Just the five and seven. Okay, so you do the first down, up, down, then another down, up, down, and then toggle the bottom string. While you're hitting that open D string, you can move your hand into the next position. Now this is where I will go back to sort of exactly the way Jimmy Page would do it. Uh, and so you've got a string skip in the middle. So you're doing five and three. You're muting that D string with the bottom of your third finger. And then it's the same strumming pattern, same uh, bottom E, bottom D string uh, after the second down, up, down. And then I switch fingers, okay, because essentially what you're doing is moving up the G string, but you've got to switch your fingers there. So I do two and one there, and then two and three there. Last one, it's a one and octave, one and four in the octave, and then back down again. Have a look at the tabs, tabs below. I'll do that again, nice and slow. <laughs> Okay, so the key is the second time round, you're not doing two down, up, downs on the one and, uh, sorry, the five and seven there. The first one is the octave, and then it comes back down to the D string. Okay, that's that first part. Second part, let's look at the second part, which is really good, and this is why you need to be in Dadgad. Okay, so we are really playing, I guess the top four or maybe five strings, you can mute the bottom or just not strum it. Um, but what you're doing is you're playing a, what looks like the interval of a sixth. So you're on the G string and the high E. Starting up on the 12th fret, okay. And you're always gonna be moving the G string down one fret, okay. Now I do the whole thing with down strokes. Move it down two frets to the 10th fret. And then we're on dots, seven, five, three. La, 
last one, single pick notes on the D string. Three, two, zero, okay? Okay, the good news is you don't need to hit the B string open there, it is just muted. So that makes it uh, a little bit easier to play again. Everything is downstrokes and trying to let it all ring out. Okay, so the next part is coming in, coming out of the part we just looked at, okay? Okay, so this part again, coming out of what we've just done, and all you're doing is you're replacing that last single note line instead of going... Okay, you're doing... Three, two, zero, and then bottom A, second fret A, open D, and then A5. Then we're doing that kind of a shuffle thing. Not a shuffle feel, but it's those two notes. Okay, so second fret, fourth fret on the D string, okay? Then he comes up on the seventh fret and he'll slide it back down. Interesting thing to note here, it, the, the riffs are amazing, but for me what really elevates the song is the sort of the orchestration around it, which I think John Bonham did. Not sure. Um, but that's where it adds all this extra color. So the guitar there is really only hitting that. But the strings, you can hear a C sharp in there. Okay, so keep that in mind. A lot of that extra color is actually coming from the orchestration, not, not from the guitar. Okay, that next sort of main part again, we're sort of coming out of a... It looks like a G5, move it up to A. In dad gauge tuning, it sounds beautiful. And then just an A5. Okay. All right, I would say those are the main guitar parts in Led Zeppelin's Cashmere, great song, what a what a classic. Uh, again, beware of that orchestration. Um, there's, you know, have a look at the live versions where Jimmy, I think, will play more to kind of compensate because that orchestration isn't there. Uh, anyway, good luck with that one. I'll see you next time. Okay, let's quickly talk dad gad tuning. Right now, I'm in standard tuning. Okay, now if I wanna to get to dad gad, some of the strings don't need to change and some of them do. The first one is that the two E strings, the bottom string and the high string are both going down to a D. Now the good news is you've already got a D, right? It's your uh, your highest wound string uh, or string four. So you can hit that, and this is if you have a floating tremolo or a bridge that's floating at all, uh, you're going to need to use a tuner. If you don't have a tuner, you've got a fixed bridge. It's not that bad. Hit the uh, D string, and then you can bring your low E down to match. <laughs> It's always good to come uh, up from above. Okay, do the same with the high E. Now you're almost there, you've only got one string to go and that is the B string. It needs to go down to an A and of course you already have an A string. It's this fifth one here, so same deal. Hit the bottom A, then pluck the B and tune it down. Now you're in dad gad. 